So far in all their analyses, we've considered what's known as fixed parameters. That is, parameters that have one value. In this example, we're going to consider parameters that don't just have the a value, but they have a distribution associated with them as well. And this distribution is normally normally distributed, and therefore it has a variance or standard deviation. So we'll be estimating a standard deviation as well as the actual parameter value. And parameter values that have a distribution as well as a one value are called random parameters. It doesn't mean they're random, it actually means that they have a normal distribution. So, let's take this example from an excellent book by Twist called Applied Multi-Level Analysis. And this comes from an example concerned with repeated measures. So here we have um, a set of four values for each individual. So it's showing the first two and a half individuals there. And it's the values concerned with health and values concerned with lifestyle. And they're taken up four different times for each individual. So we're going to consider three different models well, there's ways you can model this data um, in various degrees of complexity. The first model we're going to consider is rather inappropriate, but you might fall into this trap of analysing data in this way. So I just want to show you the wrong way of analysing it to begin with. A very naive way of analysing this data might be just to think, oh well, we've got health and lifestyle there, ignore these times and the individuals and say right why don't you just look at health and lifestyle so you could do that simply by producing a graph a good old-fashioned scatter plot graph of the two values health and lifestyle and then we could obviously add a regression line if we wished so there we are doesn't like much is going on there um, doesn't look very hopeful but of course, what we're not considering is that these values are actually four values that are repeated on the same individual. So highly unlikely to be independent. And also, there are actually a whole load of subsets of data here for each individual that might vary um, dependent upon their initial health level. So we need to take those things into account. But first of all, we'll carry on with this bad analysis and say, oh, right, let's carry out a regression analysis on this. So to carry out a simple regression analysis using the mixed models dialog box, we just go to mixed models linear, ignore the first box completely, then go into here, and we know health is a dependent variable and lifestyle is the covariate. And we click on fixed, and we choose lifestyle as a fixed variable. And it doesn't matter if you choose factorial or main effect to get exactly the same result here. And also, we don't need to worry about random variables, we're not considering those in this model. We do need to consider the estimation, how we're going to work out the value. And I want to use maximum likelihood here, because that's the version of the estimation procedure that Twix uses and we want to get comparable results with him. Um, then statistics, we just choose the parameter estimates here. So we've chosen all the options we need from here and just click OK. So in the output we have first of all the actual SPSSS syntax it created. Then we have a table called the dimension table which tells us how many parameters it used for the various parameter estimate, so it used a fixed effect parameter estimate for the intercept and a fixed effect parameter intercept for lifestyle. And it had one for the residual as well, so it used three parameters in total. And here we have our minus two log likelihood, which is analogous to the residual sum of squares. Not much use on its own, but quite useful if you want to compare this poor model with something we might produce later on that hopefully will be a lot better. And here are the intercept and lifestyle parameter values, fixed parameter values. And so we've got 3.8 there and 0.14 there. So for every one unit change in health, we have a 0.14 unit change in lifestyle. And they're both highly significant, so we can accept those parameters. But remember, we're totally ignoring here the fact that they're repeated measures and they're within individuals for values, so we need to consider that. So now we're going to create a more complex model where we take into account that we have subjects 
within a repeated measure of design. So we know ID is equivalent to our subjects, that's that first variable if you remember. And then repeated measure is defined by this value here, time. I'm going to choose here an option called scaled identity, which assumes that each of these times that we take a value, time 1 to 4, has the same variance and they're independent, there's no correlation between them for now. So we click continue. And we have the same values here as before, we don't need to change anything there. Fixed, we still have our lifestyle as a fixed variable. Parameter estimate, now we're going to random. We do want to change some things here. First of all, we want to include the intercept. So remember, what we're going to do now is actually design a model that takes into account the random possibility in the intercept that Dependent upon the individual, the intercept value will be different and it will follow a normal distribution. This is, you could say, one step up from analysis covariance where we'd have a different value at the intercept for each level of the fact we were considering. Here we're not considering discrete values, we're considering actually a distribution, a normal distribution for the intercept values. And we're going to also make sure we use this grouping variable, the ID a subject ID here. So we should have one, two random effects variables estimated in our model. Click continue and we just check we've got the same estimation, yes, that's some likelihood, fine. Our statistics, we want to make sure we actually get some output of our covariances that we're asking for and we can see here there's covariances a parameter estimates and covariances of random effects. That's what we created. These are random effects. We want to make sure we get that. So we click continue there and OK. So now you'll notice it tells us that we've got two covariance structures in our model. One, variance components, which is assuming that there's no correlation between the two that we created, a random effects, and also an identity matrix here for the, the bottom level, level one between the repeated measures. And that will set out the total number of parameters we've used up. We've used four parameters here. And we can compare that with the previous model, where we only used three. Also, we've got here a minus two log likelihood value of 812, compared to a value there of 1184. So we've gone from three degrees of freedom to four degrees of freedom, and a, maximum, uh, a massive change in the minus log likelihood. And if we divide, took one value from the other, then the degrees of freedom would be 1. And we'd do the chi-square value on that, because we know it follows chi-square distribution. And we find it was very significant, 0 0.0001. But I'll leave that as an exercise. Then we get our results here. And we've got our fixed parameter estimates. We didn't change. So we've got intercept there and lifestyle. So that's 4 for intercept and 0 0.07 for lifestyle compares to 3 there and 0 0.14 there. So it's gone from 0 0.14 to 0 0.07. So it's dropped slightly the lifestyle. And now we have the covariances, or the variance values rather, for each of our random effects. So there's the repeated measures, and that's saying what the variances for the repeated measures, and that's for the intercept. That's its variance there. And they are the same as in twists, if you look. We can consider this covariance parameter table a little more, because we can obtain from it a thing called the ICC, the Intercast Correlation Coefficient, which tells us how much variability is taken into account by us grouping the values together into patient categories, that is. So if we take the total variance value, it's 0 0.127 plus 0 0.32, add that together, and then put on the top the actual between patient variance, which is our intercept variance, which is 0 0.32, we get a, the interclass correlation value, which is around 0 0.7. And that shows that 70% of the variability is actually due to our patient categories. So we considered a model where we've got a random 
intercept, but what about a random slope as well? So that's the next stage to model. So we go back to our model, and this time we just need to change one other thing in the random. So we go back to random here, and we actually include lifestyle as well as another random effect. So now we have an intercept random effect, a lifestyle random effect, and the ID, the patient random effect. But we also want to get the correlation between them. So to do that, we actually have to choose here unstructured. So we're choosing an unstructured covariance matrix. Click continue. And also we just check statistics again. And we've got the covariances, the random effects, and the parameter estimates. So you continue. OK. And this time we get a warning, so there's a bit of a problem with the termination to try and find the actual values, but we'll st still look at them. So here we have an unstructured covariance matrix for the random effects of intercept and lifestyle, as I said. We've got two fixed effects, intercept and lifestyle, and then we've got the repeated effects there. Again, another random effect choosing identity. And this time we've got a minus 2 log likelihood of 817, which compares to our previous value up here of 812. So it looks like it hasn't done much in terms of improving the model. Continue for now. And we see we've got an intercept value of 4.05 and lifestyle 0.066. That's 4.05 and 0 0.066, 4.5, 0 0.07, so there's no difference there. And then we look now at random parameters, the covariance parameters here. And we can see we've got now a matrix in effect. We've got row 1, column 1, row 2, column 1, row 2, column 2. And it's actually presented here because I asked for a covariance table it's done it for us there in a more easy way to see just look at the first value here first of all repeated measures and that's basically the bottom level level one error variance that's point zero point one one five and then we've got here the intercept and the lifestyle so we've got a variance value for the intercept now and a variance value for the slope and the covariance between them the correlation that is you can think of between the two so this table can be quite confusing but let's make sure, absolutely sure you understand this we've got here the intercept variability parameter estimate which is 92 then we've got lifestyle and inter intercept which is really our slope parameter lifestyle so we've got here is a minus 0.17. That's saying that as lifestyle increases, the lines get less steep, as it were. Instead of fanning out, they fan closer together. And here we have this as the variance just on its own for slope. The other issue we need to consider is, is this model with both a random intercept and a random slope better than just having a random intercept? And we do that just by carrying out the likelihood ratio test. So we take our degrees of freedom there, which is 6 compared with the previous one, which is 4. So that's 6 minus 4 is 2. So we've got the chi square just need 2 degrees of freedom. And then we take this value there, 812.006. And take that value away from 817.807 and we'll find actually that it's not sitting at all it's something like 0.12 or something so we can actually say we go for the more parsimonious model and we ignore the random slope and just go for the model with the random intercept question is how do you interpret these values these fixed effect values with a random intercept well twist is very good it explains that you can actually interpret this lifestyle estimate value 
two ways and you can interpret in the between patient interpretation and with inpatient interpretation. So between patient interpretation is compatible with the normal way you'd interpret it. So that is two patients differ in one unit of the lifestyle indicator then they differ by 0 0.07 units of the health indicator. The second way we can interpret it is concerned with the fact that they are repeated measures so that when health increases by one unit of a particular time period with a patient, a change is accompanied by an increase of 0 0.07 units of health for that patient if we consider repeated measures. Um, the problem is that this regression coefficient here, this 0 0.070, is partly between patients and partly within patients. So it's difficult to say which part of it belongs within and which part belongs between. There are ways of doing that with twist talks about which I won't go into now. So I hope you enjoyed your first introduction to random effects modelling.